What's going on Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV and in today's video we are going to do a film study of one of the gameplays from my stream yesterday and the topic of this film study is we are going to take a look at like a 700 to 800 player versus myself and we've kind of done another film study where we looked at a very very good player like a top 10 player and this one we're going to look at a game versus a player that's on that fringe of 700, 800 and in this video I'm going to tell you some of the steps so if you're in that position where you're in the 700s or you're in the 800s and you're looking to take your game to the next level and get up to that World Series, maybe you haven't made World Series yet and you're just trying to make World Series for the first time, this video is going to break down like the things that you probably need to work on to get there. And we're going to go ahead and rewatch this game and I'm going to teach you some things about how to get there. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I believe my opponent's record is like 111 and 98. So if that sounds like you, hopefully this will be a good example. We're going to start him off with the first pitch. It's going to be a sinker. Ignore this pitch. I was throwing a, throw a changeup, but I think I was like thinking I was throwing a fastball or something. I don't know what happened there, but he does swing over the top. Well, much better examples. I apologize for that. I don't know what happened there. I didn't even remember that. Then we're going to go to the slider inside. Nice combo there where we used all three pitches. Now that's one of the main things I want to get across to you in this video is mixing up your pitches is so important. You're going to see kind of where I place pitches in this video, but mixing them up is so, so important. I played like one of the best players in the world recently, and I went back and looked at my pitch analysis afterwards, which you can always do in game, but you can always do that after the game as well. And I noticed I was throwing like 50 sinkers. I was throwing like 20 slider slash cutters, you know, that slider or cutter, depending on the pitcher. Some of them have both, obviously. And then I was only throwing like three to four change-ups, and that had to change drastically. You almost want it like 25, 25, 25, you know. You want, it, you want it like an even split of all of your pitches as much as possible. You do not want to be spamming that sinker like over and over again. I know it's a really nice pitch to have. And you see me even throw like two sinkers in there, but let's go to that slider on the outside. It really keeps them off balance. Ned Yost, uh, the former Royals manager, used to always talk about like you want to be on balance at the plate and you want to keep them off balance when you are pitching. So we're going to talk a lot about different pitch combos and just mixing up your pitches is so key. And also, let's talk about an approach at the plate as well. Now, the approach that you want to have at the plate, um, I think it's a pretty simple approach. And it's really what it is is... You're gonna take until two strikes unless you see a juicy pitch. I mean, that's 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 what it comes down to. Uh, I think Steve Brev's talked about it. I've talked about this kind of thing in the past too, but I really have gotten to that approach. Uh, Matt in my chat was talking about it, and it's, it, it's gonna work very very well. So just think in your mind, you can take until you have two strikes, but if you see a juicy pitch early like I did right there, go ahead and attack it. Now the thing that you just cannot get to into offensively is chasing everything. You chase everything, you're just gonna lose. Like you're straight up going to lose. You're gonna strike out a ton. You can't even put good contact on the ball uh, when you're doing that. But that's just a good approach to have in your head. All right. So take until you have two strikes, unless you see a juicy pitch. Like you see it really well. You see it's in the middle, and you just want to rip it. You can go for that. You know, I think that's a really, really. That's like the perfect approach. First of all, it's simple. Second of all, it's going to take advantage of their bad pitches, and it's going to kind of make you unpredictable at the plate as well. You know, if you go up there and you take till you have two strikes every single time, that's not good either. If you swing at everything, that's not good either. And the reason that's not good is because now they're going to be able to get pitches across. You might be 0-2 and be behind in the count a bunch, so that's not good either. You just want to take the dots, and then you want to swing at pitches that are good. I mean, it's a very simple thing to do, but sometimes it's easier to say this now but then you go into the game and you just completely like don't stick to the plan you know what i mean so you stick to it for like three or four batters to start out the game and then like the fourth or fifth batter you're just you're not sticking to it anymore <laughs> you're swinging in pitches outside the zone you might want to make you might make a mistake here and there but i would say if you can keep your chase pitches to like three or four out of a hundred like you've done your job you've done really really well see that's an example right there oh no but i saw juicy right down the middle of david justice we're gonna let it rip that's a pitch that I probably should have laid off of, but that's why we do the film study here. Now we're 0-2, so we got to protect. Going to knock that foul. And let's see, another pitch here from Cliff Lee. Going to protect 0-2. We got a runner on first base. Looks like it's Mike Trout over there. Going to protect on that. That's still not a bad at-bat, really. That's not a bad at-bat. We could have maybe not swung at the second pitch of the at-bat, but we protected the whole way. 
and we uh, just did what we could. He threw a couple good pitches. Now Soriano's up. Let's see. First pitch he had bat. We're taking. So that's an example of a dot. We're taking there. We don't run swing at that on the 0-0. Second pitch. You're going to find using this approach that you're really going to get a lot of pitches taken. Uh, that one was juicy. Let's go ahead and rip at it. We were late on it. We dropped the PCI, but that's okay. One thing I've been doing a lot lately, too, is like you got to throw your last swing out a lot of the times, especially if it's a bad one. That's a good swing right there. That's a good swing right there. But you got to throw it out. Um, you know, if you if you mess up, you mess up. Like Another thing, too, <clears throat> is I really don't get too mad about the results of what happens. All right, that's like another really big key for me right now is the only time I really get mad is when I'm not playing well. Uh, we should have hit that pitch too. That was right in the middle. But when I'm not playing well, that's when I get mad. When I'm chasing a bunch of pitches that I like are just completely outside of the zone or I'm check swinging on them, that's when I get the most frustrated. I can live with it if we're squaring up pitches and we're driving them and they're catching it. I can live with that like a hundred times more. Than us, than myself, just playing really, really, really bad. Started with the slider there, then go to that circle. He just cannot handle that circle right now. Let's go to another one on the outside. So this time we didn't even use the sinker in this at bat at all. We went slider inside. We went circle, circle, and uh, he also chased that last pitch. This is another chase. He needs to be taking that pitch. You know, first that, <clears throat> oh and oh right there. He's just swinging at that pitch like why? There's no need to swing at that pitch. This pitch, uh, another kind of a dot. Maybe he saw that well in the middle. I, I want to see what it says in the feedback to see how close that was to being a, a strike. That's probably not a good pitch. In our approach, he would have taken that pitch. So we're going to start him off with the circle again. The circle, he was just having tons and tons and tons of problems with. He could not lay off it. Let's go to the slider on the inside. After we get 0-1, we're going to go to the slider inside. And then swinging at that just kills you. I mean, this swinging at these kind of pitches... That's just not going to work. This is like the worst thing that you could possibly do. 0-2, uh, you had to protect. We did hit the zone right there. Let's go to the circle below the zone. Let's see if it gets below the zone, too. And there's the chase right there. It's tough on 0-2, though. It's tough. It's almost like, you, I don't know, if you swing it, you got to make them dot. I mean, if they, they are swinging, or if you're swinging at some dots, you're just making it so much harder on yourself. You just make it way, way, way tougher on yourself. I think uh, Trevor Story is coming up here. I really have liked Trevor Story a lot this year. He plays such good defense. He's got 99 defense for me right now, 99 reaction. His arm strength's going up. I've got him at parallel three. I've really been enjoying uh, him on the team. Uh, it's just really, really nice to have like a solid, solid defender at shortstop. I've been playing him over the Wander Franco. I used Wander Franco for a little bit, but he's not nearly as good. <clears throat> There's also some stuff we got to talk about on the channel as well in regards to that uh, that video that I just put out measuring like the frames of every swing. Every swing is the same too, uh, which is pretty crazy to think about that every swing is four frames. Uh, it's just one of those things that's uh, kind of mind-blowing, so you really can go with anybody. Pretty good swing from Trevor right there. You're going to hit it out to, to left field. Who's he got out on left field? Does he have Bellinger? I think he is Bellinger. I can't really tell. That looks like Bellinger from... I kind of got to sit back as I record these from like a little bit of a distance. So I'm doing my best to see it. Jackie Robinson was so great for us yesterday. And so was David Justice. They were both fantastic for us uh, yesterday. And our pitching was just unbelievable. There's a lot of games too where if you just know how to pitch, you can win a lot of games. Especially if you get up to, you know, maybe you're like at 840 or 850 and you're playing some people on Legend and... It is a lot more difficult to hit on Legend than it is, uh, you know, on Hall of Fame, obviously. But that's going to help your pitching out. And maybe if you're playing against somebody that's even with you, kind of like, that's what I really want to, uh, to get across in this video. Is I want, you know, if you're at that 700, 800 range, you don't need to really focus on being a player like me as much. Is you need to be focusing on, like, being even with a player like me and then beating, being better than the other players that are in your skill set right now as you improve you know what i mean that's what you really really need to do so tom glavin pitches up pitches up do not slack on the pitcher at bat like battle with the pitcher battle with the pitcher if you're not taking a couple pitches with the pitcher you're not doing your job either you know get across a couple pitches make them just uh do what they gotta do battle with that pitcher try to get base hits with them because Anything that you can get out of that pitcher is really going to help you win. All right, so let's start off this one. We started off a lot with this. We're not just spamming the inside sinker. We're kind of spamming that outside sinker. Good job by him to, to lay off that. 
Our next combo pitch is we're going to that slider on the inside. I hung that pitch. He's got to drill that pitch. He was early on it, but he looked like he thought it was a sinker on the outside. All right, here's a curveball. You know, mixing it up. Mixing it up is so, so, so key. Now we're going to go to an inside sinker. We haven't spammed this all game. You know what I mean? We haven't just been spamming that pitch all game. So now it's even more effective. Uh, left on left, we're going to make him hit an inside sinker to start it off. You know what I mean? And if he's going to be way, way behind it too late, we're going to go back in there again. We're going to go to the well on that. All right. Let's see. 0 and 2. We're going to go right back to it. He, we're paying attention to our feedback. We're seeing that his swing is so late. He lays off that. 1 and 2. Like I say a lot of times, too. Make sure, make him like do it again. If they lay off it one time, make him lay off it again. That time, let's see what he says. Or we'll see what it says in the feedback. He's still very late. He's been too late, very late, late. It means we're gonna keep going inside. Eventually, he's gonna miss it like he does there. And that's why I still like that Tom Glavin card. 96 on the sinker. That's pretty elite still. Uh, let's go inside to Cliff Lee with it. And this is just like, I think this works a lot better when you've got uh, a lefty versus a lefty because that sinker on the inside is hard to hit. We're still going to the outside with the screwball there. All right, uh, uh, sweeping curve, excuse me. We're still going to the outside with that. And we're still going to a changeup. Looks like he's kind of on that circle. Change up with him. Let's go to the sinker up and away. Completely different pitch. Completely mixing it up. Absolutely frozen like sub zero. Nicely, nicely executed there. Still giving up no hits so far in this one, which is what we like to see. Uh, we got the cap up. Makes I, I like having the cap at catcher. You really can put them anywhere. Shortstop, center field. Uh, you know, there's I've got videos on my channel of like how to use them at catcher and all that kind of stuff. I've been liking them at catcher a lot just because you got a really fast catcher. Um, it's nice to have them in center field because you got a really fast center fielder as well. It's nice to have them at shortstop, but with my team build. Uh, catcher's just the best spot. He's, I think he's better than like Carlos Santana or like, or Hipposada, who are probably the two catchers I would use if I wasn't using him. I think he's better than like Jimmy Fox. He just like right now, it's the one spot on the diamond where I feel like he's the best player uh, on the team. I guess uh, the reason I think is because like David Justice, while he doesn't play like the best defense out in left field out of anybody I've ever seen in my life. He plays okay defense at best. He does feel kind of smooth. And this is why I don't like Wander right there. That's why it's just like I don't like Wander. Uh, his defense just isn't very good. And uh, what I was saying is Justice plays okay and left. I mean, he's going to be replaced eventually. Like, he just doesn't have the speed. He's been a really fun card to use. And like I said, him and Jackie were really turning it up yesterday. Uh, inside on that one, Bellinger's going to go make the play. Uh, still kind of on that, but I was late on it, but good PCI right there. All right, Jones coming up now. He's got a double, an RBI, and a run. Let's see how well we stuck to our approach here. All right, 0-0. Here's the first pitch. We're going to take that. That pitch is not juicy. That pitch is at least it was over the middle, but it still wasn't very juicy. This pitch here, juicy. The turn and burn on that for the perfect, perfect. And... Uh, it's a very, very versatile approach. Let me say it one more time. Um, basically, you're going to take until two strikes unless it's a juicy pitch down the middle. Once you have two strikes, you obviously got to protect, but it's going to make you... If you set up this rule, you're going to take a lot of pitches. You're going to get into a lot of good counts. Uh, that one, apparently, I thought was more juicy than it was. Honestly, that was low. All right, so we got a one-on-one -on -one count. All right, here we go. Here's the pitch. Good take right there. And it's going to make you decommit. That, that's a good way of putting it. It's going to make you decommit from certain pitches very fast by having an approach. It's going to just make you decommit real quick. Like, you see it's, like, not going to be juicy. Your brain just knows, hey, I'm not swinging at that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's a pretty good swing right there. That's just an unfortunate double play. Um, I thought that pitch looked pretty good in that situation. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So we still got a 2-0 to zero lead. We have not given up a single hit yet. He's got the top of his lineup coming up, so he's going to face us for the second time. We're going to start off with the sinker on the outside, and we missed badly. He's got to make us pay for that. Let's see what his timing was. He was late on that somehow. Uh, we're going to go back to the sinker on the inside. You know, that's going to be a foul off. Maybe he thought that was going to be a strike. And then let's see what we're going to go to. I'm going to go to the curveball. I love it. I love it just because I did mix it up well there. And that's going to go below the zone. Three different paths for the ball to take. Three different pitch speeds. Three different pitches. Uh, and his timing was completely off. 
Uh, again, instead of starting with the sinker on the inside, let's go to the outside. It's hard to stay back on that. It's really weird. You like almost stay back on it too long, and then you either like ground it out to the second baseman. It feels like a safe pitch. The only players I don't really like throwing it to is like Alfonso Soriano. For some reason, him and like Simeon hit those outside pitches well. I don't know if it's because people think they have a quote unquote slow swing, even though every swing is uh, four frames in length, but it's almost like they stay back better with those cards. All right, so David Ortiz, we got left on left. We're going to start off. Oh, he's got to crush that one. He's got to crush that one. That was a mistake. That would be in your read from the other side. It's like that had to be a juicy one. You're going to miss some of them, though. You know what I mean? Baseball is a sport where three out of ten times, like if you're getting good hits, you're doing well because you're hitting above 300. Even though I'm not a big believer in average anymore, kind of moved on from some of those stats and equating players. But it's just like one of those, like, Baseball uh, colloquialisms, you know what I'm saying? All right, inside, left on left. I'm always, I'm always late on the, in, those inside sinkers, uh, for the most part. Like it's it, that, you know, I think most of us are. It's very difficult. You got to start your swing so early. It's just not like a huge strength of mine. But uh, there's David right there. You know what happened there? We were late on it, but it was such a good read. It was like sometimes. You want to be swinging on a pitch that's down the middle. Not sometimes, like almost all the time. But my point is that we we are late on it, but we recognized it was down the middle, and so we did swing our bat, and that's that's the important thing. We didn't just let that go by and let that go, you know, do no damage on that pitch. Now Soriano's up. Soriano is so good for me at driving in runs. I just feel like that happens so often with him. Uh, over anxious there. We broke out of our um, we broke out of our game plan there. That's not good, but we do put a good swing on that circle changeup. Got b good PCI placement on it. Didn't try to do too much on it um, as well. Now another thing I haven't talked about is like where I'm playing. I'm playing the Center City Field, October 7 p.m. This is a very good field because it's very balanced. I would say like you can pitch better in this park. Just because it's not like ship it or it's not like my park that I've been using where it's just like, oh man, like everything like gets hit in there is like a home run. Like playing in a park like this will get you, I feel like it's going to give you a better chance too just because like it's going to kind of, uh, it, it's just a much, much, much more balanced park. It's like 330 down both lines. It's 400 in center field. There's not a crazy amount of elevation. It doesn't lag really whatsoever either. That's another thing I really recommend that you do. It's like when you play, make sure you go through your starting rotation at the start. Go up and down a little bit. And if it feels like it's really, really laggy, like you're hitting like down on the controller, down on the D-pad like three times, and it's like getting stuck as it's going down there, I really recommend not playing those games. It doesn't matter if you're home or away because the host of the game is always who's ever hitting at that point in time. But you just need to make sure that you're matching up with someone that has at least like good internet. Like your timing is going to be all off. Like just don't just back out of those games and find somebody that has good internet. Don't play against people that have bad internet. That's just it makes it it makes it way tougher. All right, Mike Trout sub now. Let's go ahead and go to the circle change. So we started off a little bit with that uh, you know that uh, sinker on the outside. We're gonna go that circle change. Got to swing over the top. Way out of uh, that. I don't know if that pitch or that pitch looked juicy. Look, we're 0 and 2, and that's like the value of getting them to chase and not chasing yourself. 0 and 2. Don't have to throw him anything good. He's gonna look at that slider. Let's go to the curveball on the inside. Give him like another pitch. So we're getting a lot of different looks in this one. We haven't even thrown a sinker yet. He fouls off that one. And now we're gonna go to that sinker on the outside. He's probably going to be late on it or miss it entirely. Yep, and that's what happened on that. But there you go. There's all four of my pitches all mixed up in that at bat. Very, very difficult to hit when it's like that. And this was working tremendously for me yesterday. Just tremendously. Like we had games of uh, one hitters, two hitters, complete game shutouts left and right. We went 8-0 and yesterday uh, in rank. So we were just absolutely dominating with our pitching. I know the key is just mixing up these different pitches. It just keeps hitters so... So off balance, I can't stress to you that enough. We're gonna start this one with the circle change. We're gonna go inside with the slider as well. Not really ever trying to dot that slider. We're just kind of trying to get them to chase on that, make them lay off that. There's what I really learned too is I was trying to I was I've been using that inside slider really effectively like all year, you know, to get people to chase over the top of it after combo with that inside sinker. 
but the other spot is below the zone the other you know that's where you can get them to chase too i wasn't getting them to chase i was getting them to chase inside but i wasn't getting them to chase outside below the zone and the thing i always like i, I wish i did more was getting them to chase above the zone especially as you move up in the difficulties because the one thing I get scared of about making them chase above the zone is the fact that you can hit a home run on a pitch above the zone. You really, If they chase it way inside, there's a very low chance that they're going to be able to hit a home run on it. It can happen, but it's a very low chance. Uh, a pitch below the zone, it's not going to go for a home run almost ever. Like they, You can definitely perfect, perfect it up the middle. But you're not really hitting one below the zone. Unless it's like a changeup that's like a hair below the zone. You're not really hitting too many pit Or it's just like a hair below the zone. You're not hitting like too many pitches that are like way out of the zone. That are like waste pitches for home runs. It's really got to be like way out of the zone. But you can hit one out for a home run that's way above the zone. So I'm kind of... I'm always been a little scared to waste one up there. It just has to do with like how the PCI like hits it. You get like such a good launch angle on some of those that you can drive it out for a home run but you can waste pitches up above the zone if some if you notice your opponent early in the game is like swinging and missing on a lot of those pitches above the zone <clears throat> i know this from experience because i will miss them sometimes i love to swing at them because i know i can get a home run on them but if you notice that they're missing that's a great swing right there by david oh and two that's a terrible pitch what was he thinking looking back at this on film so he threw an oh and two fastball right down the middle that was not a good pitch at all. I wouldn't even throw a fastball. I tell you to mix up your pitches, but I wouldn't even throw a fastball with Cliff Lee like almost ever. That would be the one pitch you don't want to mix it up with. Uh, you still could, but that would be the one that you don't. That's like not his. That's not his game or his strength. Is using that fastball, especially when the sinker and the fastball are the same amount of frames. Gets me on that sinker on the outside there. Let's see, 0 and 2 count here on Jones. Good protect. Good protect. We got out, but good protect. At least made him go make a play. It's like the two things of baseball also is sometimes like you want to put the ball in play and something good can happen with two strikes. Or if you're about to walk them, you want to put it in so they uh, they have to like, you know, they could possibly hit it at some play. Somebody. All right, Mike Trout up here. Let's see how well we stick to it. Uh, we went up and got that. I don't know if that's getting out. That's just that's actually a good example of a high pitch. You see where the PCI was on that one. That's a good example of a high pitch. That's like a waste pitch almost that you can still get after. And you can see how the PCI kind of gets like under the ball a little bit, and it really lifts it. Like elevated pitches really are a lot easier to hit for home runs than like lower pitches. All right, start off Posada with this changeup. He's been having all kinds of problems with that circle changeup. And that's why uh, I'm just so glad I got it back into my mix because this is a, totally a game where I would have just been going sinker, sinker, slider, sinker, sinker, slider. You know, mixing in that changeup on pitch one is so important because you're going to get something like that. It's just so, so important. Here's the curveball, too. We're really mixing. All right, three and one. He's done a good job here. I think I'm, I actually remember this at bad. I think I went after him with a couple sinkers. All right, we're not going to let you get a free pass. And I know in my heart right now, you got to think about their shoes too. I know he's going to freeze on that or he's late on that. He went into it and he's like, I'm chasing too much. I got to, you got to make that read sometimes where they're like, I'm chasing too much. Now I got to, now I got to take some pitches. And I totally got that read there. It's like, all right, he's in that mode where he's trying to take. So now it's throwing down the middle and he has to swing. So just get, you know, kind of get that read, you know, stay one step ahead. Think about what your opponent's doing. Uh, he just cannot hit that inside uh, sinker. He needs to like lay off it. That's what he really needs to do. He needs to lay off it and then wait for that pitch and then crush that. He thought it was a slider. He moved his PC out like it was a slider because it was right down the middle. That happens to me a lot. Even watching this, and then, uh, it's like wow, that pitch was too juicy. It had to be a. It has to be a slider when it was just an accidental pitch down the middle. He's got glass on one. I think he might have had like a good swing in this one. I think he might have broke up my no hitter on this one. I had uh, no hitters yesterday going into the seventh with two outs, twice. Once with lighter, once with Cabrera, and I think uh, Tom Glavin's no hitter gets broken up right there. It was a good pitch too. I just couldn't quite get there with David, and he breaks up my no hitter. But that's what I'm talking about. We've been dominant on the mound, and it's weird because. 
one of the things I think about with like a young pitcher, you know, for the Royals, like Brady Singer or Jackson Coar, or some of these younger pitchers, is like I always want the offense to step up for the pitcher. And I think that's always been kind of been my mindset. But what I realized yesterday is if you pitch really well, it can actually set up your offense and take the pressure off of your offense. Like when DeGrom's pitching right now, instead of like needing the run support or like just needing a couple runs and like the pressure's on them to get a couple runs, he really can take the pressure off of their entire offense when you think about it. He can take the pressure off their entire offense and now they do just have to scratch, scratch across a couple and they're gonna get the dub. Uh, same probably with uh, the Brewers now with like how dominant of pitching that they have in their frontline starters and uh, the back end of their bullpen. It takes the pressure off your offense when you're just mixing up those pitches and being dominant. And now you've got this approach once you step into the box. You know what I mean? So that's that's what you really need to have. And do not chase pitches. It's just so important to not chase pitches. Give them easy strikes. I remember this is the first time I've seen this Blake Snell too. He came in and just was throwing some gas too. I was like, that fastball feels like real, real fast for some reason. Um, I don't know why it was, but then I started used to it. That curveball looked like it had like a ton of break. We used to see him, was it in 19 a lot? I want to say it was in 19, not 20, that he had like the really glitchy release. I can't remember if that was last year or two years ago now. It kind of was blending together. We stay true on that one, though. Right back up the middle. David Justice is finding hits all over the place. Whether he's late and it's down the line or he hits that one up the middle. Uh, it's been uh, real solid. And again, you know, he's got the same swing as everybody else. So it's more important to look at the attributes in the swing. It's more important to see, like, does this guy have balance hitting than uh, the swing? Uh, just It's one of those things you just have to buy in and believe. You know what I mean? You have to buy in and believe, like, that's what's going on. All right, here we go. One-on-one -on -one count on Soriano. He's going to go with the change up there. We're over the top of that. I really should not have swung at that in my approach. Uh, that one I should have swung at, though. I don't know if that's getting out. We're kind of like a little bit of uh, on the other side. But, see, that's a swing I can live with. And then we didn't get a home run because we're not at this super, like, you know, bandbox park. Like, that would have been a home run and shipping, no doubt about it. But that can work to your advantage a little bit when you're pitching, you know what I mean? Like, make them perfect, perfect the ball like we just did with Trevor Story. And uh, try to get a couple more of those than uh, your opponent. When I was playing in the CCL, I always played at the Royal Stadium. And so, I'm very used to playing this kind of game where you got to, like, you got to manufacture some runs. You know, you got to be not afraid to steal a base. Like, teams that play at, like, the bigger stadiums, they kind of got to play like that. There's, like, two different styles that you can play. Uh, in baseball, you know, you can play like the power game where you try to hit it over the wall Or you can play like kind of like that finesse game and it doesn't really matter what your cards are it's just kind of like What your mentality is, you know what I mean? Like are you trying to like put the ball and play with two strikes? Are you trying to get base hits? Are you trying to move runners? Are you trying to have more of a speed build and there's a perfect example of not letting the pitchers at bat go to waste Tom Glavin comes through in a big way. We do get thrown out of the plate but that's a good example of like battling with him, having confidence with him, going up there and not defeated at the plate that you're going to be able to do something with your pitcher is so important. Start him off with the inside sinker. We're going to go with a couple. We haven't used this all game and now it's the seventh. We have not used that all game and now it's the seventh. We, the seventh we can go to like what I think is still like one of the most vicious combos in the game. He's going to lay off that. Please tell me I go to a changeup. I'm thinking of my own brain now. Like I know I would go, I know I would go to the changeup there. Man, does he have problems with the changeup? The changeup is one of the best pitches in the game. It's just, it's such a good pitch, especially like his circle is really nice right now. At parallel five, it's like 75, 76 miles an hour, and his sinker is what, like 95, 96? What's that one? 95. Like that's really, really solid. His control, like this card, is still so good. It's real. It's only 92 right there, but like if you go look at the parallel five version of him, all, the, all his control and everything, it's still, it's real solid. That one he's got to crush. 0-2, oh, we left the mistake right down the middle. He's got to crush that one. Uh, we're going to go back inside. Somehow he's very late on that. Just a tough pitch to handle. That's what you got to do with it. That is what you got to do with a good job there. So we, he laid off that one. So we're going to go a little bit lower. Same spot. He laid off that one. That's a good job right there. That's a real good job. All right, let's go to the circle on the inside since he laid off of both of those. Wow, that's a great job. Three and two. I'm probably going to go like sinker away. Yep. I'm going to go sinker away because... I want to make him put it in play. He fouls it off. Because I know that just with how his swing's been going, like he's been, you know, he's been taking too much. 
And then we get in the zone uh, that time, and uh, he's he's behind on it because for him to take those pitches on the inside, left on left, like he did, I know that he's like taking so much that if we throw it in the zone, he's gonna be late. You know what I mean? Because he's trying to guess too much instead of just reacting to what's in front of him and seeing what's in front of him. All right, one and two. Like that was a juicy pitch right there. One and two right here. I think it was one on one when I said that. Throw a low inside sinker. He's gonna pop that out to Soriano. Soriano's just he's excellent on defense. Excellent, excellent defender. Versatile defender. Lots of different positions he can play like an A plus level. The cap has got is two for three with two singles. Not bad. And there's another one right back up the middle. That's that's within our approach. We saw a juicy pitch. So they, it, it makes it so difficult because they've really got to throw dots to get ahead. Because you're just like, you're up there. You're not just up there like, oh, we're going to take, you know what I mean? We're going to take till we get two strikes. No. It's an abridged version of that. It's like if we see a juicy pitch in the first couple pitches, we're going to go after it. And then if it's, you know, if it's dotted, it's dotted. But it's such a good uh, approach. Snell ripped it. We saw it well right down the middle. Saw fastball. Turn and burn. That was like a little bit below the zone, but that's what I'm. So that's what happens when you perfect, perfect one like below the zone. Like it just goes. It kind of can go for like a ground ball base hit. It's not gonna do like. A, it's not gonna be like a home run, because first of all, you can't even get the PCI down there. You're gonna hit that one like low. You know what I mean? PCI. If you ever like do a complete circle with the PCI, it kind of goes around in the circle. You can kind of reach a little bit above. You really can't reach too far to the corners. Uh, that's not really a good approach right there. We should have let that pitch go. We got under that pitch. Let's see. Perfect. Four to zero. David Justice coming up here for us. Two for three with a double, a single, and a run. It's still got he's got a huge PCI left on left too. That's why I kinda like him better than like something like Steve Finley or something. You know, he's actually got really good hitting stacks across the board. Good at bats here so far. <clears throat> one on one. That's a good take right there on that, on that inside pitch. I mean, with our approach, we're not even coming close to check swinging on a pitch like that or anything. We just waited, got a juicy one down the middle on two and one, and David Justice hits hits it off the sign out in uh, deep center field. Beautifully done, David. I love to see that. That's great. That's fantastic. He's gonna go to Jerry's familiar here, who I still use too. Jerry's is like at that. I wonder why his sinker says only 93 to 97, because he's got the outlier one. Uh, it's a pretty good swing right there. Starting to get the confidence up. Confidence is so important too. Like you gotta have confidence in yourself. You gotta find a way to bring it out. Either you just are frustrated and you want to play better, or you know whatever you gotta do, but bring that confidence out. Like believing in yourself is so important. And uh, you know having having that confidence and like is I. It's one of those things you just really, really, really need to do. If you don't think like you're going to be able to get it done, you're not going to get it done. Just point blank. Uh, start off with another circle change here. And you can see I don't have to be too perfect on it. <clears throat> we haven't really thrown like any perfect ones, but we're, we're mixing up. Only 71% accuracy there. Getting them on the off speed. Look where the PCI was on that. I wasn't even remotely close. Now let's go uh, inside with the slider there. Let's strike them out. PCI not remotely close, like almost like a sinker swing on that. Uh, let's go back to the outside. And he's finally laying off that in the eighth. Let's go to this uh, pitch right here. You can always kind of pitch that a little bit outside the zone too, uh, if only because you know that you can come back later and counts. Um, if you're playing against a really, 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 really good player, then you might have to pitch more inside the zone because they're not going to chase. And that's what I'm trying to get you to do in this video is not to chase have that approach that we've talked about. But, uh, yeah, that's that's one thing you might have to do. But versus somebody that's on, like, the 700 or 800s that's going to chase a lot, you need to take advantage of that as much as possible. Just those two factors right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm uh, My voice is getting a little bit tired of talking for so long like this. Uh, but, uh Th those two factors can help you win right there a lot. I mean, just you not chasing them chasing. <laughs> it's, it's very simple. Uh, and that's just going to come with practice and going to come with that approach. And, you know, mixing up your pitches. I feel like I've said this a lot in this one, but mixing up your pitches and then getting to that approach of the plate are your two main things that you're going to want to do uh, to take your game to the next level. 
And that ball was hit pretty hard. You know, get a fortunate bounce right there. We've got speed on the base pass to take advantage of it too. 99 and 90 speed. Got two runners aboard here. Tom Glavin up, still in the eighth. I'm surprised I swung away and didn't bunt there. We swung away. Tommy Glavin getting it done, putting the ball in play to get us another run. And now we got the cap up here. Ooh, that's a good swing. I like that. That's a good read. That was right down the middle. We are early on a good read. Here we go. I was also using R2 as my swing button yesterday. It kind of made my like right hand kind of sore today though. So I might play. I'm gonna probably play <clears throat> a little bit off stream and uh, off recording here in a bit. Here we go. I think that's his fourth base hit of the game. Fourth base hit. I'm using the Bobby Wood Jr. swing now too. Not <laughs> that I know all, all the swings are four second or four frames. I'm using the Wood Jr. swing, and then David Ortiz deep to center field to end it. I hope this video helps out. Um, subscribe if you would like to drop a like on the video you no know, go don't feel, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section as well if you have any tips or thoughts about how to take your game from the 700 to the 900 but you really can do it it's not that much more difficult uh you're gonna get there my recommendation to you is just to keep playing games if you give up you're not gonna get any better you're just gonna stay wherever you were you're gonna stay the same and even like i said what did I, I went back and I learned a lot about, you know, how to play better by just playing somebody that was a lot better than me. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's how you get better. You got to be, play people that are better than you. It's the only way to get better. You know, just play ranked and play people that are better and don't just friendly because they have, like, a really good team. That's probably the game that you want to play, honestly. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace out.